हेलो स्टूडेंट्स इन टूडे इस वीडियो वी विल डिस्कस फार्माकोलॉजी ऑफ मेटफॉर्मिन मेटफॉर्मिन इज अ फर्स्ट चॉइस ओरल एंटी डायबिटिक ड्रग फॉर द मैनेजमेंट ऑफ टाइप टू डायबिटीज मिलाइटिस इट इज गिवन एज मोनोथेरेपी और एज अ कॉम्बिनेशन थेरेपी अलॉन्ग विद अदर एंटी डायबिटिक ड्रग्स एज पर द डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ फिजिशियन इट्स स्पेशली वैल्यूएबल फॉर ओबीज पेशेंट्स एज इट मे रिड्यूस द बॉडी वेट Now in this video we are going to study mechanism of action pharmacological actions advantages of metformin over other anti diabetic drugs then its pharmacokinetics adverse effects contraindications and few important drug interactions of metformin In order to understand pharmacology of uh, metformin let's quickly review functions of insulin So look at this schematic diagram now as we all know after meals levels of glucose rise in the blood now the, these increased levels of glucose in the blood stimulate increased release of insulin by the pancreas now the insulin binds to its receptors now as you can see over here in this diagram insulin is essential for the transportation of glucose inside the cell so insulin is required for the uptake of glucose by the cells uh, especially the cells of uh, adipose tissue and the cells of uh, skeletal muscles now as the glucose moves inside the cell the levels of glucose reduce in the blood and they come back to normal and as insulin is essential for regulating the glycemic control now very important what happens to this glucose that is taken up by the cells now this glucose is utilized by the cells to produce energy that is atp now excess glucose is converted and it is stored as glycogen in the liver as well as in the skeletal muscles now this glycogen serves as the storage form of energy insulin is also essential for the synthesis of fats that is uh, lipogenesis in the adipose tissue and also for the synthesis and storage of proteins in the muscles so these are the anabolic functions of insulin now type 2 diabetes mellitus is caused due to insulin resistance that is reduced functioning of insulin insulin becomes less effective or the sensitivity of insulin reduces so uh, type 2 diabetes mellitus is caused either due to insulin resistance or due to reduced secretion of insulin by the pancreas or both now this prevents uptake of uh, glucose by the cells and anabolic functions of insulin also reduce and thus the levels of glucose increase in the blood which is termed as hyperglycemia and hyperglycemia is a characteristic feature of type 2 diabetes mellitus and uh, now let's talk about metformin metformin is a non insulinotropic drug it does not stimulate beta cells to increase secretion of insulin metformin reduces blood glucose levels by increasing insulin sensitivity it improves the functioning of insulin and thereby reduce the insulin resistance now due to increased insulin sensitivity uptake of glucose by the adipose tissue and by the skeletal muscles increase it also reduce synthesis of uh, lipids in the adipose tissues uh, that is it inhibits the process of lipogenesis and also increase oxidation of fatty acids now in addition to increasing the glucose uptake metformin also reduces absorption of glucose in the intestine so all these actions of metformin reduce the level of glucose in the blood now most important action of metformin responsible for reducing blood glucose levels is the inhibition of the process of gluconeogenesis in the liver now very important to understand what is this uh, gluconeogenesis now hepatic gluconeogenesis is the production of glucose in the liver from non carbohydrate sources like fatty acids proteins now that is amino acids lactates etc now metformin inhibits gluconeogenesis and thereby reduces production of hepatic glucose and this 
further reduces concentration of glucose in the blood and thus glycemic control is achieved now in addition to this it also inhibits uh, synthesis of fatty acids and uh, synthesis of uh, very low density lipids in the liver and this improves fatty liver so all these actions of metformin are responsible for improved glycemic control in type 2 diabetic patients now uh, now let's understand mechanism of action of metformin how metformin actually suppresses the process of uh, gluconeogenesis and how it uh, increases the insulin sensitivity uh, this is a very important slide uh, it explains mechanism of action of metformin metformin is a biguanide it is also called as ampk activator as activation of AMP dependent protein kinase plays a very important role in mediating the action of metformin. Now, as already discussed, uh, metformin uh, reduces blood glucose primarily by suppressing hepatic gluconeogenesis. That means it uh, suppresses production of glucose in the liver. Now, look at this figure. This is a liver cell or this is a hepatocyte. Now, this figure explains how signals from the glucagon mediate the process of gluconeogenesis. Now, glucagon secreted by pancreatic alpha cells bind to glucagon receptors on the liver cells and this causes activation of adenyl cyclase. Now, adenyl cyclase converts ATP that is the adenosine triphosphate to cyclic AMP. This further activates protein kinase A and this protein kinase A then mediates the process of gluconeogenesis which causes production of glucose in the liver. Now, increase in glucose production in the liver causes rise in glucose level in the blood. So, gluconeogenesis causes rise in the blood glucose levels and this gluconeogenesis is an ATP dependent process. It consumes the ATP and these ATPs are supplied by mitochondria. And metformin by inhibiting this uh, gluconeogenesis reduces the levels of glucose in the blood. Uh, look at this figure. It explains mechanism of action of metformin. Metformin uh, enters the cell. Uh, it enters the liver cell and it suppresses the process of gluconeogenesis thereby reducing hepatic glucose production thereby reducing the levels of glucose in the blood. Now, how metformin does it? Metformin inhibits complex 1 of the respiratory chain. And thus, metformin interferes with the mitochondrial respiratory chain. This reduces synthesis of ATP, leading to increase in the AMP-ATP ratio. Now, as already discussed, gluconeogenesis is an ATP-consuming process. So, reduced synthesis of ATP and increased AMP ATP ratios cause, causes inactivation of adenyl cyclase. Now, inactivation of adenyl cyclase stops this process of gluconeogenesis. Now, metformin also antagonizes action of glucagon, leading to suppression of glucagon mediated this signaling responsible for the process of gluconeogenesis. Now, in addition to this, uh, Increased AMP-ATP ratio also activates AMP-dependent protein kinase. Now, AMPK activation also inhibits the process of gluconeogenesis in the liver and this causes reduction of insulin resistance in the skeletal muscles as well as in the adipose tissues. Now, AMPK activation causes translocation of GLUT4. So, glucose transporter 4, that is GLUT4, moves from the cytoplasm to the surface of the cell membrane of the skeletal muscle. Now, this GLUT4 is responsible for the transportation of glucose from the blood to the skeletal muscles. Thus, the uptake of glucose by the skeletal muscles improve or we can say 
there is increase in the insulin sensitivity or there is reduction in the insulin resistance. So this is how metformin uh, suppresses gluconeogenesis and improves insulin sensitivity. Uh, now look at this figure. It summarizes actions of AMPK activation responsible for glycemic control mediated by metformin. Now, uh, activation of AMP dependent protein kinase inhibits gluconeogenesis thereby reducing uh, the synthesis of uh, glucose in the liver and this causes lowering of blood glucose levels. Now, in addition to this, there is a reduced synthesis of fatty acids and uh, reduced synthesis of VLDL and this improves fatty liver and uh, this also improves the lipid profile of the patient. Now, AMPK activation also increases uptake of uh, glucose in the adipose tissues. It uh, reduces lipogenesis that means there is reduced synthesis of lipids in the adipose tissues. So on one side you can see that there is reduced synthesis of fatty acids in the liver and on the other side metformin also causes uh, increased oxidation of fatty acids due to activation of AMPK. Now in addition to this as already discussed uh, AMPK activation also increases uptake of glucose by the skeletal muscles. So AMPK activation suppresses gluconeogenesis that is reduces hepatic glucose production and also increases uh, insulin sensitivity in the adipose tissue and the skeletal muscles. That means that there is fall or there is reduction in the insulin resistance. So, this improves the overall uptake of glucose by the uh, cells and the utilization of the glucose. So, this is how metformin decreases basal and postprandial that is after meals increased blood glucose levels and thereby bring the levels of glucose in the blood to the normal and maintains the glycemic control. Uh, now let's discuss pharmacological actions of metformin and advantages of metformin over the other oral anti-diabetic drugs. Now at, as discussed, metformin reduces blood glucose levels by decreasing glucose production in the liver, by decreasing intestinal absorption of glucose and by increasing the insulin sensitivity. Thus metformin decreases basal as well as postprandial that is after meal increased blood glucose levels, bring them to normal and thereby regulating the glycemic control. And thus metformin is the first choice drug in the management of type 2 diabetes mellitus. It is either used alone or in combination with other anti-diabetic drugs. Now metformin is especially preferred in obese type 2 diabetic mellitus patient as it reduces food intake and lowers the body weight. Now metformin is a non-hypoglycemic drug that means metformin does not produce hypoglycemia that means it does not reduce blood glucose levels below normal unless it is given in very high doses or it is combined with other anti-diabetic drugs like sulfonylureas or it is given in conditions like uh, drinking large amount of alcohol etc. Now, metformin also improves the lipid profile and thus metformin has the potential to prevent or to reduce macrovascular complications like uh, myocardial infarction, stroke as well as microvascular complications of diabetes. Now, in addition to this, metformin may delay progression of diabetic severity uh, by preventing uh, increase or acceleration of beta cell failure and this metformin comes in the list of essential drugs needed for the basic healthcare system. So in addition to regulating the blood glucose levels metformin has several other advantages which are beneficial for type 2 diabetes mellitus patients. Uh, now few important 
pharmacokinetic parameters of metformin. Metformin is administered orally. Its plasma half-life is uh, 1.5 to 3 hours. Its duration of action is 6 to 8 hours and it is excreted unchanged by the kidneys in urine. Now let's uh, discuss the adverse effects of metformin. Now gastrointestinal side effects are the frequent side effects of metformin like diarrhea, nausea and vomiting, then uh, abdominal pain, anorexia, bloating etc. However, these effects subside with the time. Now metformin can cause lactic acidosis. Now this adverse effect of metformin is rare but it is serious. It is a serious adverse effect of metformin. Now, as, as already discussed, metformin inhibits the process of gluconeogenesis. Now, by the process of gluconeogenesis, non-carbohydrate sources like for example lactates, lactates are used for the production of glucose. Now, as gluconeogenesis is suppressed, lactates accumulate in the body and this causes metabolic acidosis. That means it reduces pH of the blood. And this metabolic acidosis can cause malaise, that is a feeling of illness, then respiratory distress, that is difficulty in breathing, hypotension, hypothermia, and this can be fatal and can cause death. Now, in addition to this, long-term therapy with metformin can cause deficiency of vitamin B12, which should be rectified. So, these are the side effects of metformin. Now, contraindications of metformin. Metformin is contraindicated in pre-existing hepatic or renal disease, hypotensive states, heart failure, respiratory distress uh, disease and also in alcoholics because all these conditions increase the risk of lactic acidosis. Now, metformin should be discontinued before giving iodinated contrast medium uh, or iodinated contrast agent because this uh, reduces excretion of metformin uh, causing accumulation of metformin in the body and which results in the metformin toxicity. Now, some important drug interactions now, drugs like cimetidine, furosemide may compete with metformin for excretion. So, this uh, reduces excretion of metformin and enhances its toxicity. Then, simultaneous administration of drugs like salicylates, quinolones, other anti-diabetic agents can, uh, uh, with metformin can contribute and can result in increased hypoglycemia. So, this is in brief on pharmacology of metformin. Please note information provided in this video is only for academic informative purpose. For clinical use of metformin or for treatment of type 2 diabetes mellitus, consult your physician. Do not self-medicate yourself. If you find the video useful, kindly like, subscribe and share this video. Thanks for watching this video.